Welcome, I'm Steve Danu, and I'm very pleased to have Bernard Guler with me today. Um, this is the second in our series of interviews with the Rochester Philharmonic uh, guest conductors. We're really excited to be collaborating with them this season. And um, we're going to be doing this all season, and we're really excited about it. So, Bernard, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for being here. Um, you are the music director of Symphony Nova Scotia, and you're here guest conducting the RPO this uh, weekend. What is your approach? How does it differ between being a music director and coming in and guest conducting somewhere? Well, being a music director, of course, has lots of responsibilities. You design, for example, a whole season with the, with the programs. You are part of all auditions where you make decisions who will be a new member sure. or not. Um, you are in the community, the face of the orchestra. You have to be on many functions and, and, and all this, which is very important, which was very new for me, mm. coming from Germany, where everything is paid by the state, and now you come suddenly in a world where the, the, the private people mm. are actually are the ones who carry an orchestra. And, uh, that was a very ex uh, exciting and new experience for me, and I must say it's, it's a very nice thing to see mm. the orchestra so embedded in a community. Um, yeah, and then you have to do, of course, more concerts uh, with, uh, with the orchestra you are music director of. And um, one has the chance to shape uh, an orchestra, the sound, with the, with the work of, of rehearsing and also with programming certain certain pieces. You in, uh, decide who you invite for a soloist mm. or guest conductors. So therefore g being guest conductor is wonderful. <laughs> you come, you have to know your pieces, you do the concerts and then, but of course it is uh, also a, a challenge and a, and, a, and a very satisfying and gratifying an awarding uh, function or job, job is a horrible word, but <laughs> to be to be music director because you you can you can with the time achieve uh, lots of things. Mm. Great, yeah, thanks. Uh, this weekend you're juxtaposing uh, contemporary music with romantic music, and uh, I know that's that's something you like to do a lot, you're a contemporary music specialist in a way, and... Yeah, it, uh, there are two kinds, uh, roughly, two kinds of contemporary music. Uh, ones, as we do, like we do today, which is very accessible. Sure. Yeah. Almost tonal, it's easy to understand. And there's contemporary music, which is really challenging, like Webern or No No, or John Cage, and so mm -hmm. that's really contemporary stuff. But then you always get into, with these things, you get into conflict with your audience. So it's then very important how you combine it with, of course. And um, yeah, but I'm in, in, my, in my orchestra in, in, in Halifax, we also, we have almost in each season a commission commission work, uh, which is very exciting. That's great. That is a wonderful thing. And um, yeah, but it is so important to do this mm. because we are, since a hundred years or so, we mainly play music from 100, 200, 250 years back. Mm. And in, that, in those times, it was actually normal to play always the music of their time. Mm. Only today it's so that we are always looking back and looking back and we have 150 recordings of a Beethoven symphony and it's all actually <laughs> all turning in a circle. It's the, therefore it's important to, to break that a bit and, and to, to, to care about what's, what's written today. Because it's, it's a, art is always also a reflection of the time we are living in. Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, following up on that, you know, when people say today 
uh, you know, classical music doesn't feel like it's relevant or there's a crisis in classical music. What, what's your response to that? How do, you, how do you feel about that? Well, there is some truth in it. The, the problem or the crisis, I would say, or the problem started actually when the atonality came up. Then the producer, music producer, or creators and the audience drifted a bit apart mm. and that is still a problem. So in the meantime, the, the music production come, comes back again. I mean, Penderecki, for example, he writes again uh, late romantic music. Mm. Um, but I also don't know whether that's a solution because this music was already made mm. and probably better. Um, but still, uh, whether there is a, a clear way, which I still try to find, where to go, I think it, we are still in, the, in, in a time where we are looking where, what, what could we do, what is the way really to go. Mm. Uh, it's also an interesting time, but I'm, I'm very happy that I'm not a creative artist or creative musician. I wouldn't, li I wouldn't know how to express myself, because everything is practically done. Mm. And it's, yeah, but for us reproductive musicians, it's a very uh, interesting time because we have the sum of everything that was done. Hmm. So, uh, yes, there is a bit of crisis, but it's also, I would say, it's a very interesting crisis. <laughs> and if you are sensitive, you even can enjoy this. Great. Well, one final question for you before we let you go. Um, for young musicians out there or young conductors, what piece of advice would you give them as they try to embark on their own careers? Especially when I talk to con young conductors, uh, I have to tell them that if you go through the biography of almost all the conductors, each one has a different way to get where mm. they then ended up. It's a bit different than with instrumentalists. They have a, a more regular way of going to a college and do some uh, exams and tests and, and, and competitions and all this. Mm. With conductors, everybody starts different. Some come from the piano, some come from orchestras, some started from the, the beginning, becoming a conductor. There is not a golden rule for mm. becoming a conductor. The most important thing is you have to be, you have to listen to yourself and ask yourself, do you really want to do this? Of course, on the surface, it looks very nice if you stand there and you do that and they have to do what you... If you stand there, in reality, the world looks completely different. Mm. And then, and if you then find, yes, I want to do this, then you have to find a way to practice. And even if it's a little chamber orchestra of students or whatever, you have to practice this because that's a problem of young conductors. Mm. Each instrument, instrumentalist has his instrument. They can practice wherever they want. A conductor, nothing. Mm. He can do it in front of a mirror if he wants or with his CDs or whatever, but that's not the real thing. Mm. It's only in front of an ensemble where you have to move a group of people to do something which they, they might not want to do. You never know. Mm. That's the real thing. And that, you have to find ways to do this on any, at any cost. That's the only way to, to learn. It's really learning by doing. Well, hey, thanks very much. We appreciate that. Good. And thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time.